Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors legal hotline lawyer. Welcome back to our video series entitled DB's Wish List. How should brokers use paragraph 16 on form 21, the addendum line? And what is the significance of forms being referenced on that line but not included in the purchase agreement and vice versa, forms being included in the purchase agreement but not referenced on that line? The blank addendum line on the face of Form 21 is an index. That's it. It is not a term of agreement. It can create no terms of agreement. It is a reference only. It is a secretarial tool. It is an index of the documents attached to the form, attached to the purchase and sale agreement. It can be used as the one and only index. It could be used simply as buyer's reference to the forms to the addenda that buyer is attaching to the buyer's offer. It can be used by both listing broker and buyer broker if it's continually supplemented as forms are added to the purchase and sale agreement. There is no one or right way that the line 16 of form 21 will be used but there are so many wrong ways to use form, uh, line 16 of form 21. So let's talk a little bit about what I mean with all of this. <clears throat> Typically when the buyer makes an offer, the buyer broker is going to identify on the blank lines on paragraph 16 of form 21, all of the addenda that buyer is attached. Form 35, inspection addendum. Form 22A, financing contingency, et cetera, et cetera. That offer goes to seller, and if seller accepts the offer without making change, then it's easy. We don't even really have to worry too much about this line until we get farther in the transaction, which we'll talk about in a minute. But let's say seller counters. And let's say seller counters by creating a Form 36 counter offer addendum. So now listing broker and seller are going to add another addendum to the buyer's offer with the hopes of creating a purchase and sale agreement. You'll notice on the bottom of the counter offer addendum page, there's a place for signatures, both seller signature and buyer signature. So let's say that listing broker has seller signed the counter offer addendum, Form 36, and then goes to the first page of Form 21 and writes Form 36 on those blank addenda line. Seller signs everything, initials all the addenda, sends it all back over to buyer's broker, and buyer accepts. And buyer accepts by also signing on the bottom of Form 36, the counter offer addendum. And let's say that in that process, seller initialed the reference handwritten by the listing broker on the face of Form 21 to include Form 36 on the blank addenda line, but let's say buyer didn't. Now, fast forward in the transaction. Hopefully you all agree that when buyer accepted seller's counteroffer by signing on the Form 36, we had mutual agreement. If you look at the top of Form 36, the introductory paragraph, it says that Form 36 is a counteroffer addendum. It incorporates and sets forth all the terms of buyer's offer unless revised or amended by the terms of the, buy of the seller's counteroffer. So in other words, the language um, of the Form 36, this, this addendum is attached to and made part of the buyer's offer. That's what the language says. That language with the seller's and the buyer's signature, that language attaches the Form 36 addendum to the purchase and sale agreement. Even if the Form 36 is never referenced on those blank addenda line. So let's go back to our question. Let's say seller initialed the reference of adding Form 36 to the face of Form 21, but buyer didn't. And let's say we're two weeks away from closing now and somebody wants out of this transaction. And as they're scouring the form, trying to find a weakness in the contract, they discover, aha, 
The seller initialed this addition to the face of Form 21, but buyer didn't. So that must mean I can terminate the agreement, right? Wrong. Because the blank addenda lines on the face of Form 21 are a secretarial tool only. They are an index. They do not create or take away from the terms of the purchase and sale agreement. The counteroffer addendum was agreed to by both parties when it was signed below, and the introductory language says that it is attached to and made part of buyer's offer, which ultimately becomes the purchase and sale agreement. So regardless of whether it's ever referenced on the face of Form 21 or not, that attachment language and the signatures of the party attaches Form 36 to the purchase and sale agreement. So why do we have the blank addenda line? We have the blank addenda line because you need an index for your purchase and sale agreement. Every broker is held to the standard of care of a lawyer when they prepare a purchase and sale agreement. Part of that standard of care requires that you create a well-organized, easily read and understood document. If you have addenda that are out there in the, in the universe that apply to this contract, but we have no way of knowing that they're part of this contract, that's not helpful and it doesn't rise to the standard of care of a lawyer. You need an index. Does the index have to be on the face of Form 21? No. It can be. And if you use those blank addenda line uh, correctly, then both listing broker and buyer broker are going to hand write or, or type the name of the form, the, uh, the form number, the name of the form. They're going to reference on that blank addenda line the, uh, the addenda that are attached to the purchase and sale agreement. No buyer or seller needs to initial those additions because the attachment happens when the buyer or seller initial the addendum or sign the addendum and the addendum includes the attachment language up at the top of the addendum, which every statewide form addendum includes. You will not find a statewide form addendum in our entire statewide form system that doesn't have the language up at the top that says this addendum is attached to and made part of that purchase and sale agreement data, yada, yada, yada. So you can use those blank lines on the face of Form 21 to create your index or you can create your index elsewhere. You could have a blank piece of paper on the face, on the top of your purchase and sale agreement that says index. And then you can include all, you could identify all of the documents that are part of the purchase and sale agreement. You could have a cover letter that goes back and forth from listing broker to buyer broker and back again that says attached, please find seller's counter offer, which includes, and then you could identify all the, all the documents that are part of seller's counter offer back to buyer and vice versa. I don't care how you create an index, but you need a competent index. And the blank lines on the face form of Form 21 are a good spot to create that competent index if you do it correctly. But where the problem often comes in is that buyers or sellers and too many brokers don't understand that there is no need to initial the, the inclusion or even the striking through of document names or reference numbers on those lines. They are an index only. They can't create or take away terms. So answering, let's answer the rest of this question. What happens if an addendum is referenced on those lines, but it's not part of the purchase and sale agreement? Or what happens if an addendum is part of the purchase and sale agreement, but not referenced on those lines? Let's look at each issue. Let's say buyer makes an offer and includes a Form 21, Form 22D, Form 35. Form 35, of course, is the inspection contingency addendum. They send it all over to seller, and buyer learns that this is a very competitive property and there's gonna be multiple offers. So buyer and buyer broker, buyer instructs buyer broker and says, take out my inspection contingency. I don't want an inspection contingency. I wanna make this offer stand without that. Hopefully I'll be selected as the buyer. So buyer broker removes the inspection contingency from the buyer's offer before submitting it, before presenting the offer to the seller and the listing broker, but forgets to strike through form 35, the reference to form 35 on those blank addenda line. Let's say seller accepts the offer. Now seller has signed the form 21, the form 22A, the form 22D. Seller hasn't signed form 35 because it wasn't part of buyer's offer when buyer broker submitted it. But the reference to Form 35 is still on those blank lines. What's the significance of that reference? The answer to the question, there's no significance to it. It means nothing. It was an error. It should have been struck through. 
should have been struck through by either buyer broker or listing broker because there is no Form 35 in this purchase and sale agreement. The fact that it says Form 35 on those lines cannot create an inspection contingency for this buyer. Word to the wise, strike through Form 35 because if you don't, and we have mutual acceptance and we're moving on to closing, buyer's lender is gonna say, hey, where's the Form 35? We can't proceed until I see the Form 35. And then you're gonna to have to figure out a way to explain to the buyer's lender, and this is challenging, I'm telling you. You're gonna to have to find a way to explain to the buyer's lender that there is no inspection contingency in this transaction, notwithstanding the reference to Form 35. So what's the flip side? Let's say that the buyer makes an offer and then the seller adds the Form 36 or the seller adds a 22 EF, the evidence of funds addendum. And those addenda don't get referenced on the face of Form 21. And, and neither broker creates a competent index for this purchase and sale agreement. But buyer initials the Form 22EF and signs the Form 36. They're never referenced anywhere, except that buyers initialed them and seller and buyer both signed them. And they both include the language that says this addendum is attached to and made part of. Are they in fact part of the purchase and sale agreement? The answer is, Yes, they're part of the purchase and sale agreement because of the attachment language and the signature and initials on the bottom. This is a long video and this sounds like a complicated conversation, but really this is a very simple issue. There are problems that arise with brokers misunderstanding of those blank addenda lines, line or paragraph 16 of form 21. It's really a simple issue. Those are those lines stand to create an index only. Just remember, they're an index only, they can't create or take away from the terms of the agreement. Strike throughs and additions to those blank lines don't have to be initialed so long as the addenda itself, the addendum itself is signed or not signed as the case may be by the parties. If you have questions on this topic or any other, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtor member.